Today, I want to talk about my wood boiler again. I made a video on my outdoor wood boiler and despite it being a little cringy, it got a lot of views. I actually made about three different videos on my wood boiler and I got a lot of questions and comments, discussion in the comments section. Made me think it was probably worth another go around. I'm going to see if I can address some of those topics that I didn't in the previous videos. Let's get into it. So the age old question is work versus reward. Is it worth it? If the work is not your reward, then probably not. I love firewood. I love splitting firewood. I love burning it. I love the smell. It's good exercise. I love the equipment. I love everything about it. Splitting all this wood to save a little money in your gas bill, not a great investment, but at least you get something for the effort and you have a lot of fun while you do it. So I think the thing that people most commonly misjudge is how much wood it takes to heat your home. I built this shed, it holds five cords, five full cords, not face cords, and I thought that might be enough. It is not. You can agree or disagree with me in the comments if you felt that way about your boiler. So I've been stacking wood in here too. This is three full cords there, plus I've got two totes for the fireplace inside and two more totes of boiler wood. In addition to all that wood, I've got these eight totes in here. This is where all my cookies go and everything that's too gnarly to stack neatly. And I will still split probably another two full cords, which will yield about three more of these totes. And I think that will make it from, I would say December 1st to mid-March. So granted, I have uh, a lot of square footage to heat. I've got this shop here, which is about 4,300 square foot. I've got my house, which is about 3,300 square foot. Uh, we've got a four car garage in addition to that that's got radiant heat. So, I mean, we're heating eight, 9,000 square foot. So they make units that are uh, more efficient than these. If you had a gasifier unit, which this is not, this heat master is not terribly efficient you know I don't know maybe maybe this would be enough five cords with a gasifier and a smaller house no shop uh, but I don't think so I thought when I bought my boiler it would be really nice to have the backup and it's kind of a I don't know off-grid thing was was my line of thinking but the boiler itself takes electricity to run the pumps and when I heat my house uh, it still takes the forced air furnace, you know, the air handler to move the air into the house over the uh, heat exchangers and whatnot. So um, if the power goes out here, if you're in a grid failure situation, 
it doesn't do you a lot of good unless you've got a generator uh, to back you up on it. So what we do get from our boiler is a lowered gas bill. Not a zero gas bill because our dryer and stove still run off the propane. But we also get the freedom to heat as much as we want. There is no guilt heating your house to 80 degrees. And since ours does the hot water, taking a half hour shower, it's 152 degree water, which pretty much melt your skin off. But with an on-demand boiler, you will never run out with that coupled to the outdoor wood boiler. It's pretty awesome. So let's talk about the wood. Um, <laughs> I've played around with the size of wood, the species of wood, the dryness of the wood, how you store it, how you stack it, all kinds of things. What I have found is that more wood in the boiler does not necessarily last longer. I think what happens is you build this massive fire in there and a lot of the heat winds up going up the chimney because it doesn't need that much to uh, heat the water. You know, I think that you get this massive fire with all these logs, it's just burning hotter and bigger and more out the chimney but at the end of the day it would have taken half that fire the same amount of time to go out and it would have done the same job. I'm sure that's debatable. So another theory I have on wood, and don't crucify me in the comments, please, or do, that, that helps too. I think the green wood burns longer than dry stuff. This here is mostly oak and hickory. And this year I split it smaller, I stacked it sooner. So this is getting uh, seasoned. In the years past, I've taken the biggest rounds I could get I split them greens. A lot of them I didn't split at all. I did what I could with my inverted splitter and I heaved these 100 pound logs in here. My theory is the boiler burns when there's wood in it. It dampens it down and when it wants heat it turns a fan on. That fire sits there and smolders but it's burning regardless of uh, whether it's asking for heat or not. Not as much uh, when the fan's not on. But if you put a big green round in there, even though you aren't getting the BTUs, most of the time it's just sitting there smoldering. smoldering. The longer you can get it to do that, the longer the log will last. And when those fans kick on, even on a green, dirty, ice-covered log, uh, you still get enough heat to heat you know, the water in there, especially if you're only trying to heat it from like 140 degrees to 170, it takes about, I don't know, one minute and the thing kicks back off. So I do think that there's a place for green wood. Now, if you have a gasifier that's more efficient, it's my understanding that they will not burn uh, all the things that a non-gasifier unit would. So I'm trying this year to stack my wood smaller, cutting it all to the same length, stacking it all neatly, Making it smaller allows me to fit a lot more in this. In the past, I've just split it uh, with the inverted splitter, if at all. I paid no attention to the length I cut it to, just whatever would go in there, and whatever looked like it was small enough for me to still pick it up. One of the biggest problems I found is when I go to Kentucky for a week each month, and I ask my wife and kids to keep the boiler fed, uh, what do you think they like to lift? Probably not the big, muddy, 100-pound frozen logs. I, I always laugh at my wife that, you know, when we buy uh, like trail mix for the kids, they pick the M&Ms out. And it's the same thing when she's filling the wood boiler because I come back and all the small pieces are gone and all I'm left with is these big mammoth ones. And I certainly don't blame her for that. So I'm trying here to cut smaller wood, prettier wood, let it season. And I'm going to see if more BTUs get me longer or shorter burn times. I can tell you for sure my back will like this pile a lot more than the ones I've had in the past. One thing I really like about my system, and I would highly recommend to anyone designing a system for themselves, is this indoor water fill. All I have to do is turn a valve, it's hooked into the water system, and it will add water uh, to the boiler. So if you're on this uh, gauge on the top, if your water boils over, gets too hot, whatever it is, it comes out, just evaporation, uh, you will lose some water in February and you have to come out here in sub-zero temperatures, find a hose if you can even find one that's not frozen, climb up on top of this with a ladder and fill it up. That is a miserable job. All I have to do now is turn a valve inside. I don't know, wait till it overflows here or count 10 Mississippi. 
close it off and I'm good. One of the things I got a lot of comments on uh, on one of my videos was about draining the boiler. And boy, some people get uh, <laughs> heated about that. Some say, never, never, never drain your boiler, ever. You'll make it rust out. Some say, well, you could drain it or do a water change, but don't leave it empty. It needs to have water put back in right away. Some say, test your water. If it tests fine, you could add, put additives in. You could do whatever, but you shouldn't need to drain it or change it just for, you know, the sake of doing it. Um, so there's, I don't know, what do you guys think? Put it in the comments below when you think or if you think the water should ever get changed. Um, I think it comes down to the maintenance on the machine and they require very little. They are pretty resilient machines. You don't have to do a whole lot to the system. I don't fiddle with valves and temperatures. It's kind of a set it and forget it and I'm on, I don't know, I think that was year six of lighting the thing. So uh, we're doing pretty good around here. But that water change deal, uh, and I can't speak for every brand, but Heatmaster will test your water for free if you send them a sample. In fact, when I bought the boiler, it came with uh, little bottles of water you could fill up in tubes uh, that you could mail it in and have your water tested. I'm sure they'll recommend and sell an additive if you need it or tell you. Some guy said you could, you know, open the valve in the back and get a little water out and you could kind of see what color it is, if it's black it's healthy if it's rusty uh, you got a problem in the tank because it's getting air inside there's there's a myriad of things that could be wrong or opinions um, for me I think uh, I will send in a test sample since it's free and uh, we'll see where the chips fall or what I need to do and adjust accordingly so another thing that came up a lot in some of these videos was whether or not I or other people are running glycol in their units or antifreeze I do not in mine. I was told, and maybe you guys know differently, uh, that glycol loses its antifreeze properties fairly quickly uh, when you heat it up uh, beyond 120 degrees. So this is set to shut off at 170. Sometimes it gets up to 190. We just make sure that when it's cold enough to freeze the water in this tank, that the pumps are running at least, if not a uh, fire in here ideally. Sometimes in the beginning and end of the season it might get below freezing at night. You're a little concerned, but it isn't during the day. I haven't had any trouble and I don't know anyone else that has either. Two of my neighbors have similar units to mine. They say they never have any problems. Uh, I don't even run glycol on the floor in my shop. That definitely never gets over 120, but I want it warm all the time. I got other things in there that I need to not freeze. I got computers and a bathroom in there and it's full of plumbing. It, if by chance the fire goes out, one, I have a propane backup that will kick in, uh, but you need to get it fixed. And the shop doesn't drop from, you know, 60 to 10 overnight. It'll take, it, it'll hold its heat for, I don't know, four or five days that slab will stay warm and you got time to get something fixed, burn a little propane in the meantime. I don't think that it's a very big concern. This is over 300 gallons in here too, so the cost to put glycol in there uh, would be hefty. I don't know if you guys can see all the smoke out here in the yard. It's definitely a little hazy, so something to think about if you got a boiler is how close you live to your neighbors and how cooperative they are. I don't really have any. I've got one over there. He thinks it's great. Not a big deal, but uh, something to be concerned about. One thing I was curious about before I got a boiler uh, was if I could actually eliminate my propane bill. Seems like a nice thing uh, on paper, but is, is it reality? And like I said before, we run our dryer, our gas stove, and our barbecue grill all off the propane tank that runs the house. This tank here is for my backup generator, so it runs every now and again to test the generator. It's set on Wi-Fi. Uh, but for the most part, we really have eliminated all of our propane needs for heating the buildings. It, it does really work. And again, it requires making sure you're always filling your stove. Uh, I fill mine three times a day is nice. Uh, run out there morning uh, before I go to bed and once in the middle, maybe when I get home from work. That works really well, uh, but if you're diligent about keeping it full and making sure the fire never goes out, you will not have a gas bill for heating. You know, I hear a lot of guys say that they don't even use a propane or a gas or electric backup. They just use straight uh, uh, outdoor boiler wood. You know, my neighbor uh, lives over there. Uh, he has one, and, and I think he had told me in the beginning uh, that they didn't have any backup, but it only did their garage at that point. 
So if you do have glycol in your garage floor and it runs out, you're not afraid of uh, you know, anything freezing, you don't have plumbing out there, or if you have like a garage that you only heat uh, part time, uh, it would probably work just fine that way. I'm too chicken to try without the propane backup. We have these little sensors that clamp onto the hotline. Like now I just lit the stove. Uh, the heat is running in here, but I guarantee it is running on propane still because that water is not quite up to temp yet. So when that sensor senses that the water coming in from the boiler is hot enough to heat the building, it will cut off the propane supply and just run off the boiler. Um, that kind of brings up another point. You know, I did another video comparing a uh, wood stove to a boiler. Um, and I think in a scenario, if uh, you had a small house without a lot of rooms, maybe an open floor plan, uh, wood stove would do a good job. You know, in my house, I have two furnaces, one for the front wing and one for the back. You could run the fans nonstop and burn. It would do pretty good. The very back corners of the house, uh, I mean, from... The <laughs> Corner to corner, my house is like 100 feet long. That's that's quite a bit to expect a uh, wood stove to do. It can be done. You can put it in the basement. You, like I say, you can run your boiler in your furnace. That would keep up with it. If it was a smaller, what I would call a one-zone house, that would probably be a great option. You do have to put a lot more wood in it. Here, if I'm doing my garage, I'm doing my basement, I'm doing both wings of my house, my shop here, the barn, the woodworking, I need like six wood stoves. You'd forever be filling them. Um, but like a boiler you turn it on this time of year here in the fall and you turn it off in the spring it's not a good uh, you know turn it on when you need it option because it's gonna take you know all afternoon for that thing to heat up where a wood stove it's pretty quick in Kentucky I've got a little wood stove in that cabin for some supplemental heat we turn it on the cabins warm I mean within 20 minutes it's warm you know in an hour you could make it you know hot enough to open a window um, so I think if I had uh, less need for multiple rooms to be heated, less square footage, or if I was in a scenario like a, a small shop or a garage that I was using for a workshop, and I just wanted to heat it when I was out there working on the weekends or in the evenings or something, maybe a wood stove would be a better option because you could just turn it off between uses uh, and not have to worry about keeping it full all the time. So another thing that got brought to my attention through the comments, and I wouldn't have thought of this in a million years, also some of the videos that I watched on my own, is uh, if you don't have a fire in your furnace, uh, let's say like right now, it's 50 during the day, 20 at night, you decide uh, you wanna run the pumps to keep the water circulating, make sure it doesn't freeze, but you're not really ready yet to commit to you know burning a lot of wood in there. Um, some people would say does that heat exchanger work in reverse so when the cold water from your boiler makes it back into your home into that plate exchanger that's circulating water from the furnace are you pulling heat out of your house and heating the water up in the boiler for me we have a loop that goes from the boiler into the house or into the shop a plate exchanger that warms up another loop that goes back to the furnace when those pumps are on that loop back into the furnace uh, is not running. So the only heat you'd pick up would be like the room heat from you know that plate exchanger just sitting indoors. Might be a little warm, might help a little. I can't see that making enough difference to really uh, notice, if anything else. Um, and again, at that point, if you're not running the boiler with a fire, your need for heat must not be very great. So I can't see it. Uh, being a big deal but I don't know maybe somebody else has a different experience with that it certainly made me uh, think about it I think in my case uh, it's probably not much of an issue I was recently uh, talking back and forth with Jay from Homestead Jay if you guys uh, are interested in boilers and haven't seen his channel he has a lot of wood boiler uh, videos but we were talking somebody in one of his videos was giving him a hard time about wearing a different flannel and noticing that every year when he starts boiler season he's got like his you know that year's flannel that he wears and i said man i'm making an effort to wear flannels now instead of hoodies uh because gavin come here in camera gavin's cameraman today these hoodies right here when you are pulling this firewood out and throwing it in here and splitting, this stuck. hoodie pocket just gets full of mulch. And the entire winter, you're walking around with mulch in your jacket. I thought maybe uh, 
you know, new flannel here uh, with no pocket might do better. I might have to get some hoodies and just unstitch the pockets because I do like the hood. But anyways, I thought that was funny. So is a wood boiler for you? There's so many factors that go into that decision. I think this is fourth, maybe fifth video that I've made on wood boilers. And there's a million more on the internet as well. And you could still hem and haw it to death. Uh, but I love mine. I really like doing this. Uh, it's not all about saving the money. You know, that's a nice bonus to your hobby. But I love firewood. I love splitting it. I don't care to start a firewood business and sell what I've made. I just like making it for my own use. If I don't feel like doing it, I don't have to do it. But at the end of the day, I got to do something with all this wood.